All right. Well, first of all, like, I'm so grateful, like, that you made it a conversation and not an interview. I'm so, like, you know, you just kind of like, okay, interviews are over. It's just time mm -hmm. to talk about, like, what the problem is. So, um, yeah, you know, for me, like, um, the, the crazy thing about the whole business model, I've not really um, connected deeply as much as I have with the work of Sugar Awareness. Uh, for um, especially brown and black folks, what I like to say. Um, so, um, and in my journey, I think it's just like a little bit different from like the typical person who finds out that sugar is a problem. And I'm saying the typical person would maybe be, uh, you know, someone who's white or uh, we'll say privileged, you know, because I didn't come from a privileged background and nor am I white. Um, so I think just finding that connection between like sugar and, uh, you know, and my health was like a big thing for me. So I'll kind of start just by saying, hey, you know, I'm, I'm from Texas. I'm, I was born and raised in Tyler. Most people don't know much about Tyler other than they may know about the roses that we used to be the rose capital of the world. And then um, Earl King is from Tyler as well. So um yeah, and I think I just kind of grew up like most black households in the South. We just, um, you know, was kind of influenced by just having like a protein on our plate and then like two sides. And I say those sides could, they're usually like carb loaded, you know, when I look back to it. And then on top of that, you're going to usually add sugar to some of those things. Um, and then, of course, whatever you drink is usually if it's if you have you know extra money or whatever it's going to be you know some sweetened beverage right so um and then so i have to put that background back there and um, to say that that's kind of just like the way i grew up eating and then the the other part of it is just i've been a nurse now for 20 this is my 24th year in nursing and so okay. uh one of the things that's kind of been striking uh to me is just, you know, I've done a range from labor and delivery to critical care. Um, I've done uh, a little bit of research and uh, a little bit of administration. And it's just uh always striking, like and glaring to me that, you know, you can look on any given day, uh, whether you're going down the hallway, looking in the beds, or either you're looking on uh, at the data, you can see diabetes and hypertension, yeah. red flag all yeah, over the sure. place, you know, especially if you attach a brown or a black body to that. So mm -hmm. um, that's kind of like uh, the background of sort of why I was really interested in kind of using sort of the lens uh, to kind of go deeper and just to keep going with that curiosity, you know, in like, I'll just say education. Um, yeah. As you know, you know, in America, we've got, you know, it, racism is real. I, I don't think there's any way to deny that it's a, a thing. But uh, one thing that really kind of triggered me to say I've got to do a little bit more was the, uh, the, the killing of Tray Mar Trayvon Martin. And uh, a radio station that I was listening to on a daily basis, the um, the commentator would always kind of talk about, like, what are you going to do? And I'm like, well, <laughs> you know, I can't protest. I'm not that girl. You know, um, you know, uh, with healthcare, I have to use a unique lens of being compassionate no matter where I stand. You know, that's right. just what I do is I care for people. So, um you know, I, I, I decided then, like, let me just go back to school for human rights and social justice. And I think, you know, at that time, I was just trying to make a connection between why are we dying so much? Why are we dying prematurely? Like, what is the deal? What can I do to help myself, my husband, my dad, my brothers from becoming a statistic, you know? And so um, I... I felt like the strongest thing I had in my bucket at that time was just using the lens of healthcare. I couldn't really just, you know, do anything else but use healthcare. So I decided to take that journey. And I think it was like probably one of the, the best journeys I could have taken as just a human. Uh, yes. You put aside all the other things that are going on in the world, because one of the things that uh, really uh, kind of fueled my motivation to continue on in school was I started out with a class in the Holocaust. You know what I'm saying? And so once you learn about human rights and justice and 
uh, what it looks like and how it starts and propaganda and all of those things, you can use that lens on every other thing, yes. you know. And yes. so let me Absolutely. just say, I'll put um, <laughs> closer towards the end. I'm sorry, go ahead. No, no, I'm saying like that's, that's exactly it. So Misty just had to jump off because she's boarding an airplane and she's going to come back in if she gets a chance to. I cannot hear you as well as maybe you can hear me. I'm not sure oh. if that's... Sorry, so no, Misty had to just jump off because she was, oh, there she is, she's back. I can't hear you, Marta, and, and I really want to. Let me let me try something uh, real quick. Maybe it's a, uh, I've got too much. Now, let's try that. Okay, can you hear me okay? Mm, not really. Can you hear me? So, um, if you can hear me, I guess I'll just keep talking. Is that okay? Absolutely. Can you like? Is it? This, let me see her. No, my my voice all the way out. Okay. I can hear uh, you. Um, can you hear me? Uh, I guess not. Can, I can hear you, Missy. Oh, you can. Okay. And and Sean, what about me? Oh, that's much better. I can hear okay. you now. Okay. Perfect. So, okay, okay, so you sorry about that. yeah, so sorry, finish your saying. So, like, you looked at like the Holocaust and looked at how there's these, these examples throughout history that inform how you're approaching this. That's correct. And so, when we look at the Holocaust, you can definitely see the fabric of uh, mistreatment of individuals on all levels, you know, medical mistreatment, you know, how people look, you know. Um, you know, of course, racism was a part of it. And, you know, just looking at all the atrocities. And then the, the bigger part for me uh, while studying that class was just kind of looking at myself and saying, what am I going to do? Am I going to be a bystander or an upstander? You know, so um, and using that kind of lens throughout uh, the courses of studies that I uh, had a chance to do, I was like, OK, uh, it got to the end of the program and I was just like, um, let me. Let me see if I can just maybe do something that I know, which at that time, uh, I was, I've always been bothered by my grandmother passing away too fast. I always just like, she just died prematurely to me. I don't care how we look at it. Um, she was a great woman. And I, the only connection I could really make at the time was like, she, you know, had diabetes. She um, maybe... Of course, in our community, we won't call it overweight, but she was overweight, um, but she was a loving person, you know, um, gave yeah. us so many of the soft and hard skills we needed um, just to ha have a great family, you know, but, uh, you know, it just kind of really upset me, you know, so, and, and kept me motivated on trying to figure out what I could do to sort of change things. And so I decided to work on just looking at sugar and African Americans. Uh, but then once I started looking into that, I was like, oh my gosh, like, like there's no paper that has not been written on diabetes and, and black people. Like I, the, I, the, <laughs> I didn't need to do any more research in that. Yeah, so yeah. Um, I, don't, I don't know if you can still hear me or not, Martin. I can. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Because it may be my problem, and I'm so sorry if if it's, it's okay. a connection on my end. You're doing great. You're doing great. I can't hear you. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, we, I, you're doing great. And I'm just saying hi to Carolyn from Gambia in West, western part of Africa. I see it here in the notes here uh, in the comment section. Um, okay. No. That's okay. Um, so. so I can hear you. Go ahead. I don't know. It's it's so weird because every time Misty comes back in, it's like everything's perfect. <laughs> that's how I feel too. I mean, people have been saying this about me for years. Just none of them are related to me. Right. <laughs> Do you think it's mine? Let's see. Let's try that. Okay, is that better? Sounds like it. Yeah. PVE design. Um, can you hear me okay? I just want to read this comment. Oh, it's just spooling now thinking. It's such a big topic. I mean, because Oh man, yeah. 
when you take a look at it and when you take a look at just how addictive it is and how yes. Right. So okay, I couldn't hear so, anything. So let me just jump in real quick and say, you know, what it's such a big topic because when you take a look at all of the other drugs out there, first of all, you know, we don't see sugar as a controlled substance. And yet we know that the things that sugar does to the body are very similar to what a lot of the class A controlled substances do. But, yeah. you know, we, we can't talk about that because no one wants to hear it, for one. And for two, you know, it's, it's just not regulated that way. Right. That's true. I can hear you all this time now. Sorry. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> and and to give you some lens to um, what that looks like in Canada here too, here in Mississauga, they in, they started an initiative where uh, my city is just on the outskirts of Toronto, and they did a they did a, a signing of this thing called Cities Changing Diabetes, mm. and, and it's a fantastic initiative where what they're doing is um, what they're doing is they're they're inviting cities to take this pledge where they're going to educate people and do initiatives and they're going to get funding for it. And it's usually like small businesses or large corporations that do it. And Mississauga is the first city to sign on as a city on the city changing diabetes thing. So uh, Nova Nordisk is a, a global company that's doing it and they're now educating on the impact of diabetes and preventable diseases in the black and brown communities. You know, so you know, it's, it's fantastic you, to see. You know what's um, strange? Like I, I, I'm, okay. So part of my nursing eyes, I see this mm -hmm. whole thing about diabetes and education. I'm like, and I, I rarely see them talk about sugar. You know, it's always like this management of diabetes or, you know, but I, I, I think if we really dig a little bit deeper, we should really try to prevent it. And we've got to put sugar on the table, you know. Okay, so qu question there then. <laughs> yeah. if, if that's the case, is that simply just a, a, a money thing? Like it's easier to just blanket address diabetes instead of going after industry by pointing at sugar, like vilifying sugar? Is that is that really why they sugarcoat this method? I mean, I you know, I, I really like to say that uh, whether or not I, you know, myself or anybody else likes to acknowledge it, it's a large industry. And so is healthcare. And so is a pharmaceutical <laughs> company. Yeah. You know, it's a, right, the, it's, exactly. These are large industries, very large industries. And, um, Money is definitely in it. I don't know. I don't know how, you know, like when I think about my small self and how do I make changes in my household, the biggest thing I can do is just keep, you know, like on this road to sugar awareness, you know, because as soon as I figure out what sugar is, there's going to be a new sugar out there. <laughs> and then, and then I'm going to, you know, so that's, that's just how I look at it. So, well, and I think in talking to Martin's point, we, we also have to distinguish, I think, I think, and maybe I'm wrong, please correct me if I am, we have to distinguish between a type 1 diabetes situation, which could be related to a virus, they're thinking, or some other gene issue, versus a type 2, which is somewhat considered to be diet-related, but can be hereditary, can come from an identifiable gene component as well. I don't think that we can just say it's sugar, but I can say that when we're talking about type 2 diabetes and the things that we don't even recognize as sugar to the body, you know, a lot of people think of sugar as, you know, I'm eating a box of Mike and Ike's and then I'm having some ice cream and all of that, but sugar is way more than that. Would you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, absolutely. And so, um, just to kind of go back a little bit and just to talk about like why my road to awareness is a little bit different to everybody else's is because I use this lens of history to kind of inform me, but also to motivate me. So um, I had a, an opportunity to go down to Sugarland, Texas, and to learn a little bit more about like how black bodies were put to work 
after we were free in America. And, uh, you know, that's how what we call the convict leasing and how this prison industry is sort of, you know, we use black bodies to put them to work for sugar industry, you know, in particular in Sugarland, Texas. So, um, but then I also had an opportunity to go down to um, the sugar, the old sugar plantations in near New Orleans. And, you know, I, the only thing I can say is, you know, with those two experiences, plus trying to write a paper uh, to get out of, you know, the uh, master's program, I really uh, learned that my why was going to be rooted in history. It was going to have to be rooted in history. And so, you know, after that, then I said, let me study a little bit more because I can't leave this thing off the table. I was just primarily looking at sugar as sugar. And of course, I had made some changes. My my diet, uh, you know, just the behavioral changes with sugar, reading labels, sugar this, sugar that, keeping that. And the weight was going down. But then when I decided to go on a little bit further to learn that sugar is really like carbohydrates, <laughs> you know, and then I'm like, oh my gosh. So right, yeah, you're right. We're talking about sugar has many names. And I always tell people, don't even think that a carb is not sugar. It's the same thing. So when our American, the American Heart Association, they give the standard uh, guidelines on our sugar intake, added sugar intake, and they will tell us, you know, if you're a woman, 25 grams of added sugar daily. If you're a man, 36 grams grams of added sugar daily. Those are the limits. So, okay, if you look on a pack on a on a box, and you, maybe you're reading that label, and you're saying that, okay, all I'm going to have is that 36 or 25 grams daily. You'll see that that's not much sugar at all. Like if you, a, a, a soft drink will blow it. And then when you look into like looking at high fructose corn syrup and just saying our bodies are never supposed to have that in it. Like high fructose, our bodies won't recognize it. We won't process it. It creates the fatty liver that people are non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. It spills over into the gut and creates the, the uh, leaky gut and then into the bloodstream creating sludgy blood, which sludgy blood long-term ends up, you know, breaking off, you get a clot or a stroke, right? It's it's kind of like you, it gets to be that easy. But if we don't talk about like sugar and sugar awareness in communities of color, I think we're going to lose, you know, we're just going to continue losing. I don't think it, <laughs> the battle is kind of showing where we are right now, but I think we'll just continue to lose, you know? Yes. And the so, cost so, of that, no, sorry, by the way, sorry, Martin, but the Good. cost of that, I'll, I'll come back when she shuts up. Okay, cool. I'll, I'll just jump in. So, Sean, what's been like your, one of your biggest wins to date in this, in this messaging? You know, I, uh, I think I'll, I'll start with like, it's a personal win, you know, mm -hmm. uh, for, for me, um, it's, it, you know, I think you probably know this and Misty, I'm sure you do too. Like, I think whenever we start something new, um, we try to develop like a level of commitment to it. And when we see that it works, you know, it's the, it's the commitment piece that's really like the tough thing. Yes. So, and, and, and for me, like it's, it's like just trying to stay true to what's new to me because sugar has been rooted in what I've been eating all of my life, you know, yes. from yes. the time I was a baby till now. So, mm -hmm. so now that I have this new lens and now that I've lost 40, 50 pounds at this point, 50 pounds, can I stay true to it, you know, to yes. this whole new, new thing? So, and, and that is not really just about the weight. It is like my mind has changed. Mindset. Yes, yeah. exactly. And that was not coming if I was just going to the gym or trying to run or trying to cycle. That was not the thing that, so with, with the sugar, like bringing that off was like, Wow, like, oh my gosh, yes, the sky is gray, but so what? <laughs> we knew we were going to have some bad days anyway. So it's really like about this whole thing about 
me being able to cope with some of the crappy things that are just going to happen as a part of life. And then understanding that when I am strong, I am able to support people yes. and do my life's work, which is to care for people and have compassion and concern. Like, how can I do any of that if I feel sick myself? How do, how do I do it? You know, and so it's really just like one of those things for me where I'm just so grateful that mm -hmm. my perspective is different. And it's just because of sugar. You know what I'm saying? And so I'm, uh, and I, so I'll take that as a personal win. Uh, everything else about what has happened with sugar in my life is really, it's like a, it's just like a plus one. You know, if, if yeah. Great. I'm grateful that I've been able to start a uh, Facebook group and um, share sugar awareness with that. It's called Sisters Breaking the Bonds of Sugar um, and share sugar awareness. Um, and then to see like some of my family members change, you know, and see the progress and they send me pictures and like, oh, my gosh, I didn't know that sugar was the thing, you know. Um, is it, sugar, it cha sisters changing the bonds of no of, sisters breaking the bonds of sugar oh, breaking the bonds okay yeah so and that's a I'm Facebook afraid. group yeah so about um there's about eight hundred women in there so and and I'm just oh. grateful I think you also know too like what what if you don't have like in you you have this new knowledge it worked for you. You know, you have Pilates as your platform. Mm -hmm. What if you have that and you can't share it? Like, <laughs> it, yes. so, and that's the other, that's the other thing, what I like to call like a relief valve, you know, like it just mm -hmm. allows me to, to let some of the pressure go that's building up inside of me and to use the creative side of me that I probably wouldn't use in my job. Uh, but then also, I think once you step into that, then that whole thing kind of releases you into this realm of uh, accountability that you did not anticipate because you don't think that people are waiting for a post or they're looking for anything. Mm -hmm. And they're like, why haven't you posted in a while? You're like, I love it. Well, that's, oh. that's, it's so affirming, right? But it's mm -hmm. not too, I think to that as well because you're coming from a nursing background and then you found something that you could really wrap your, your talents into in a sense, it's like now you have a, a, a proactive angle to your reactive job. Ooh, Ooh I love that. <laughs> I may need to write that down. <laughs> Maybe you should write that down. Cause it, because it, 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 that's, that's it, right? Like you sense now it's just like, I can now do something and you're, it's so empowering that you don't, you're not in a reactive mode like you are for your day job. That's true, which is really like a survival kind of mode. You know, you're you're just going to work just to survive. And now I go to work with a new lens and going through COVID like, you know, I don't know. I, everybody's obviously going to get it or have it. But I, you know, I've been sick. You know, I'm grateful for that. Yeah. You know, but I've been able to uh, be on the front lines and help, you know, without being sick. You know, I think. I think yes. it's a great place to be in. So, Absolutely. Um, and yeah. you get to thrive too, right? Like, I mean, it's, it's, it's survival, but it's more than that. It's thriving because I'm always asking the question of what makes you come alive, right? I mean, mm. this is something that makes you come alive. And then you start to realize that people, people can have a massive change in their quality of life by making a minor pivot. Yeah. I think that's huge. Yeah. It's and huge. it is. Yeah. And then, I mean, the power to model that behavior for others, especially when it's something as seemingly basic as sugar intake, but it's not basic at all when we think about how inundated we are with sugar in so many things that we do. Everything we do is, you know, there's a sweet involved, there's a, a, an addition to our beverages. You know, it's it's very rare to find something that's other than a vegetable or a meat that has not been touched with added sugar. That's true. That's so true. You know, um, I think you were talking about some of the, the pluses. You know, I think, too, like, uh, naturally, 
I'm not like I don't I would prefer to have be in a small group and just do that but obviously when you have something that you need to tell people about like this whole social media thing you you're like okay uh, this is kind of the only way I've got to share you know the information so I've been able to make connections like you know with people that I never would have known and that also starts to fuel things too you know like Pilates I didn't even know anything about Pilates before sugar. So, and then meeting mm -hmm. Cecile, I have a class with her every Wednesday morning at five o'clock my time, you know, and my, my thing with that is just, you know, that's a new level of, you know, of me that I would not have been able to tap into before. Fantastic. Because yeah. it's also testing my commitment, you know, like, can I do this every Wednesday at five o'clock? Sure. You know what I'm saying? And so, it, and so sugar is, is the thing that really has like, when I tell you my mindset, I, you, I can, I can see definitely the addiction piece that we never talk about, but yeah, yes. I was in it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it was like so true. So true. I was going to say that. Yeah, absolutely, Misty. It is, it is that catalyst. Um, mm -hmm. And then you're going to take that template into everything that you do, right? And, and uh, that's so true. And, you know, someone said it to me this way when I was talking about Pilates and Pilates for men. And they were like, you're making Pilates look cool for men. And I think in the same way, you're making the sugar mode off thing look cool. Like it's, mm. it's not a sugar shaming thing. It's not a fat mm. shaming thing. It's not a whatever people want to attach to it. Like you're making it look cool. To like, Let me dive deep on the history of this. Let me dive deep on the origin of it. Let me dive deep on looking at a case study for my community and understanding why this has a bigger impact than just uh, uh, an aesthetic reason. And I think that you're doing a great job of that. Yeah, the same thing with you, you know, with, I mean, let's, let's just face it, you know, um, our race helps us when we are there, you know, our brown faces are there in spaces that typically brown faces aren't, then you like, well, yeah, I mean, you, you and I both know how intimidating that is to go into the room and to be the only brown face, you know? Right. <laughs> but once you learn, okay, I'm I'm so curious about this that I don't care, you know, about right. who's listening right. and who's not, you know. Um, yeah, and but I, I think yeah, that that is something that I think uh you know, it informs me in the way that I inform my girls. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Like it's just like don't worry about them, don't do just go. You know, so, yeah, I think uh, so when you say cool, I've never thought about it in that way. But, yeah, it is. It's just given us a new new way of looking at things and saying, you know, at this point, race doesn't matter, you know, or, you know, I don't even know if I don't even know what the thing is. I don't, I'm not even trying to be cool. <laughs> you know, I'm just trying to like, hey, yes. y'all, you need to pay attention. And yeah. I tried to trigger preaching before and that didn't work. <laughs> like, <laughs> but you are having conversations that are, are challenging to have because people diets you know, what's the first thing that people are going to lie to you about oh I'm a really healthy eater but yes. and, you know, dot 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 let me hear all the ways that it's not super healthy people have been shamed their diets have been stigmatized to the yes. point where nobody wants to talk about it people don't even want to talk about what it looks like to be healthy because they don't want that conversation to go to the nanner, nanner, nanner place. Yes. And so, you know, when you approach it as a normal person, you're not coming at it with the science, uh, heavily with the science, at least to start, I'm sure. You, you are approaching it as, hey, I'm a regular person who is on this journey. Look at yes. where it took me. Do you want to travel with me? And I think yes. that's a big deal because then it goes past the shock value of the Thanks, cool Carolyn. It becomes yeah. very much about the, hey, how much do I want to check in to my yes. own self to be better? Love that. The, the word that we used earlier this week was you're inviting people into this. 
You're not shaming them into it. You're not condemning them. You're not guilting them. You're inviting them into, as uh, you know, this comment says here, uh, the, this war against sugar that we're in, right? So, Sean, it's more. It's I'm more sugar smart because of the information you share. I've been able to inform, educate, and clarify aspects of the war we're engaged in. Mm. Wow. Wow. Let me, let me screenshot that for you. Yeah, you should write that. Yeah. Down. That, that's cool. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, I, yeah. I mean, yeah. I, and but I think that's that's what you know. I guess because I'm I'm so clear on um, you know those last days when you work in critical care and when you work through COVID, you see a lot of last days, a lot more last days yeah. that you know they're premature, right? And you get to wondering, like, what really matters? You know, what what really matters is that I've done the work that I think I've been called to do, which is to just, um, you know, keep it simple, keep it basic, uh, keep keep it reachable. You know, uh, don't change my tune. You know, um, you know, take my little East Texas self and sit right there at the table somebody invites me and yes. and just you know speak my truth you know if nothing else just speak my truth okay Can you I just, um martin yeah, go ahead. You wanna, i just want to jump in and highlight what you just said about keeping it reachable i just wrote reachable down yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. because that's that's the biggest challenge you know everybody is so sure that it's unattainable to even cut their sugar levels it feels so insurmountable that people don't even want to approach that. So when you say keep it reachable, um, first of all, I love it, and I want more people to hear that. But can you also share what that reachability means? What does it look like to you to say reducing your sugar can be reachable? Well, you know, uh, it's it's weird because the the first thing that um, I would like to say is that you can't cut sugar until you cut sugar. Like, and and I'm not saying cut it all the way out, but because sugar is so addictive to some people and so, and creates so many cravings for some people that the only way you can you know, uh, curve your appetite is to literally cut down on it. So when you, the first thing you would have to do is to say, okay, I'm not going to make any changes today to my diet. I'm just going to literally write down how much sugar am I taking in today? You know, and in America, and, and for, we can just say, even if we just, just talk about sugar and carbohydrates being the same thing, First of all, just looking at that and just saying, if we're going to keep our limit at 40, no more than 40 a day. OK, so once you write down, OK, I've had a sausage biscuit meal, you're going to see that you have blown it already for the day. Mm -hmm. So once you establish that then you can start saying, well, do I really want that sausage biscuit meal or what can I have in the morning that will keep my sugar intake a little bit lower? Mm -hmm. You know, because the problem with sugar is what sugar does on the backside. You're going to start yeah. out with very high sugar intake and then you're going to bottom out because your, your body's going to release so much insulin and it's going to try to bring it down and it does a great job of bringing it down but it brings it too low you feel like crap and then you eat more sugar mm -hmm. to bring it back up so most people are on this cycle all throughout the day yes so what what we are trying to do like literally a great body that metab metabolizes well defends well feels well is the one where the sugar range is pretty stable throughout the day so stable meaning no less than 70, no greater than 120. When you're in that range, you're losing weight without even trying. You know, you're defending without working so hard to take all this vitamin C and blah, 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 and all of that. So you're, you're naturally doing it. Yeah. So I just tell people, if you start out with just saying, okay, how much am I having? Because most people are unaware that they are taking in about 200, you know, grams of sugar daily. Most yes. people are unaware. 
So if you're not aware of that, then you can't even make any changes. But I think once, and that's why I like to talk about sugar awareness, because if I talk, first of all, if I step over my boundaries and talk about sugar addiction, and you didn't even know sugar was a problem, then that kind of is, it kind of comes across in a rude way, I think, because you're just like, wait a minute. I'm not on crack, you know, I'm not on cocaine, you know. And in our mm. community, sometimes the last thing you want to hear is that you're addicted to something. You know, you wouldn't want to hear else. that you're working hard and you're trying to feed your family and you're doing, you know, you're not lazy. You know what I'm saying? And I do want to work out. I just don't feel like it. So once once people learn that that sugar has so much to do with the way we think and how we feel and our motivation and the negative self-talk and all of that crap, then I think that, and this is just, I, I don't like to really try to keep up with the number of people who have made those changes because I think that's something for me to put in a checkbox and I, people like me love checks and you know we're like oh great i did this no oh, i've seen it yeah. people's lives it changed so, my husband's life you know so and sorry, my- sorry Sean, i was just gonna ask a quick question you kept it really simple in terms of the dialogue around sugar are we talking about simple or complex carbs like do we, do we break it down at this point when you're getting people on, a, on just on the awareness level of sugar or are you saying this refined white sugar is of the devil and this sugar from a sweet potato is not so bad like how how complex are you getting with the with the dialogue so i don't really try to dig too deep into breaking it down into complex carbs or not because if i w- once i do that then people are going to try to do a lot of comp- comp- complex carbs which in the long run that's not a bad thing i think for the most part and people who normally know about complex carbohydrates they have, they're on a different level of understanding sugar, m- mostly. That's, you right. know, we're talking about the nutrition group, the sure. the working out group. But for the average person, um, yes. when you say that you read that label and that label says that if you eat that entire bag of chips, that that's going to be 15 uh, grams of total carbohydrate. You know, then you can start to say, wow, do I want to have two bags of chips and that's it for today? Or, what? you know what I'm saying? Because I think that will mix the message. Um, And if you're that granular, I I promise you, you're already aware of sugar. (laughs) Okay, so that's a good point then, because I'm drawing the parallels to the fitness world. And uh, one of my friends, I used to do all these like uh, shopping channel shows with Tony Little, right? Mm-hmm. And he would have us doing like the the gazelle, for example, and, or some kind of like basic thing. And then my friends who are in the fitness world are like, that's not really good. That's this. Like you could be doing this and this is better. But when you stop and think about the fact that his target audience is zero to movement. Right. <laughs> he's making a massive impact. So his audience is zero to movement. Where my audience is movement to better movement or pain right. to healing or whatever it is. So everyone has their different things. So what you're doing is a very specific market. So I, I get what you're saying. If someone's already granular in terms of trying to ask you complex questions about complex carbs and all these different things, they're not necessarily your audience. It's more for the person who's unaware that reading a label on a package is something that's probably a good practice to be in. Right. Right. Can you speak to that? I just thought of that right now, but can you speak to like reading labels and what we should look for and stuff like that just for the audience or people want to hear what you have to say about it? Absolutely. Um, So I think that sugar, when we, when we talk about sugar and reading labels, it's, it's three things. And I say, you know, a lot of times they'll say read left to right, you know, that's how we read. I say read from the bottom up. So you start uh, with the ingredients. The ingredients is really good about just letting you know. Um, how sticky sugar can be because you and I both know like there's not just one name to sugar. Um, you know, and then so, okay, if you read the label and it says sugar, you know, like, yeah, okay, well, maybe I can have this. Then you know for sure it, it at least um, has sugar in it. 
Um, but then it gets a little bit more tricky after the word sugar because sugar has about over 70 names and you learn that the sugar has so tapioca, you know, some type of cornstarch or whatever. So at least when you're reading from the bottom up, you'll get to know if you have any sugar or what I call hidden sugars in that. Because a lot of times the ingredients is the best way to find out about what's really going on with the with the product because i think if you just focus on saying okay there's no sugar but then when you taste something you're like well this is sweet yeah and how is it sweet okay well oh okay okay it has high fructose corn syrup in there okay mm -hmm. so then when you when you when you move past that and then you at least get a foundation of understanding hey these ingredients you know, and I, I put out, usually I put out a list of the, the sneaky sugars, what I call. That gives people an idea. Like, if you're trying to cut this thing, then, hey, there's your list. You'll know to put that down. The next thing is moving up to your added sugars. So this is what I call, like, the way that um, I, I think it's, it's, the, it's the Food and Drug Administration's way of just trying to help us out. If they tell us that they put five grams of added sugar in a product, then at least they've told us how much added sugar that they put in there. I think that's great. And then when you move a step further, but, but if you look sometimes at the added sugar, we'll say that that number may be five grams. But then when you go up to the top and look at total carbohydrates, you may find out that this thing has 15 grams of total car carbohydrates. So there you are with this at least saying, I can eliminate this way to use the process of elimination. I can use these different ways or angles to look at whether sugar is in this product or not. Usually you get to the top, if it's total grams, 20, you know, grams, or what, you can just start making decisions, you know, on whether or not I'm going to toss it or not. So that's kind of the way I like to look at it. And how I try to teach it too. Yes. Yes. And so the comment saying acknowledging one sugar addiction is critical to moving away from it and towards freedom. Yeah. Yeah. So the process is sugar awareness, then acknowledging or recognizing if you have a sugar addiction. So, and, and I agree with that totally, but it's just like, you know, when, when we talk about uh, drugs and alcohol in our home, we have hammered that into our kids' heads. At least they mm -hmm. know it, right? Yes. So yes. we've had this conversation from the time that they could really start talking and taking candy from other people. And you're like, you know, you're not supposed to do that. But what if we haven't had that conversation about sugar? And then, you know, so the same way that we have talked about, you know, uh, candy, you know, taking it from strangers or alcohol or drugs, that same conversation I think it needs to be had in black and brown communities. We owe it to people to say, this is what's going on with the food. And yes, if you continue to have this thing all the time, you are addicted, right? Yes, yes, absolutely. Yeah, Misty had to, had to. Uh, yeah, no, no problem. Yeah, yeah. yeah, no, absolutely. And that's good. And now the other thing too, I wish I got a chance to get this in before Misty stepped off, but there's a sense too that, you know, we were talking about your passion for this. Like you said earlier, seeing those premature losses uh, and also understanding the history and your testimonial and you have the education mm -hmm. as a nurse. And, and there's, I mean, are there times when you can, do you find yourself leaning on, well, listen, I'm a nurse and I've done further studies, I have my master's, to, like the leaning, leaning on the academic thing to get you into rooms or to, to qualify what you have to say? Do you feel like you've had to catch yourself doing that at times? No, you know, you know why? It's because most people don't want to hear it. You know, it, when you yeah. think about like, th most people don't want to hear it until there's a point in their life where they have what we call, you know, a pain point. You know, it's not until they develop type 2 diabetes right. or they are trying to work the weight off and they're trying to ask, well, how did you, how are you keeping your weight off? You know, um, so a lot of people um, and, and, you know, when I think about like just kind of 
hospitals and, and, and what goes on off stage is, you know, we have access to whatever we want to eat. <laughs> and a lot of times that's going to be the donuts in the morning, you know, the coffee and cream and sugar. So uh, you, I get it, like, that that most people are not going to want to hear it. And I, I, I've, I work more tr on trying to be um, – an example versus yes. like doing this, you know. Yes. Okay. And then if somebody approaches me in curiosity, I'm like, okay, you, are you sure? <laughs> like, cause mm. I can talk about sugar all day, you know. So kicking uh, the kicking sugar initiative that's coming up. Can you talk about that? Well, um, that is so. Uh, that was a summit. That is. But you can still log on to it. And um, yes, that's a great summit that happens uh, usually twice a year. And this okay. year, was, it was a unique opportunity for me to be a part of that summit. I've been on there and been interviewed before, but this time I had an opportunity to co-host. And okay. so, um, and with that, you know, it, it, talking about race, we got to put that in there. And, and specifically uh, the... Um, the the founders of it, Amy and Florence, they allowed me to interview people who I know. So I, I just think it was a unique uh, bring uh, people of color to the stage, you know, uh, and outside yes. of me, you know. So and, and I love that. It, it was just a, you know, it was like a, I don't know, I don't know if it's a once in a lifetime opportunity, but it was a great opportunity for me to learn sort of how oh, some this is your launch patch, Sean. This is yeah. just starting. This is yeah, like it was it was so cool. And then I also had an opportunity to be on um, Hungry for Answers, which okay. is a um, it's I think you have to go to Discovery Plus to look at it, but it was um, uh, actually produced by Do um, Viola Davis. And uh, it's a four-part series, mainly kind of focusing on food and injustice and, and the different ways that um, food and race are all intertwined. So it was a really cool opportunity. You know, I'm just like, you know, yeah, it's been fun, you know. But I, I don't, you know, the old Shun would have really uh, done enough self-sabotage to put herself off the stage. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Like, I just, I wouldn't have been able to maintain coolness and keep anxiety down or, or anything. So it's just been, it's been great. Just, just allowing shun. Sure. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, just yeah, shun. To be shun. Yeah. And you, well, you're so, um, you, you hear how empowering your journey in this is. As opposed to just saying, well, I've read all this, I studied all this. Like, it's like, this is your own personal journey that you're sharing with people, your personal experiences you're sharing. I think that's the most powerful thing that, you know, and when we have these conversations, you know, on core conversations and people in the fitness industry, I'm always asking them, how did you find Pilates, right? And they share their story of injury as a dancer or, um, you know, rehab or whatever it is. And then they, they get to this place where now, the Pilates and their movement practice is so real to them and they want to share that joy and you're doing exactly the same thing. Right? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, that's good. I want to see more. I'm really excited to see like, you know, like more of the posts or like, is there a podcast coming? Do you have a workshop coming up? Are you doing any coaching? Are you, you know what I mean? The you know, I so stuff the, the business mind goes like, okay, we yeah. have sugar mode coaches for all over the country. Like, right? like, you know, so you're, you're going right down the alley where my brain has gone, which is, uh, you know, I know that with any movement, mobilization is, is the biggest step, you know? Yep, yep. And so um, I've been thinking of it, but part of, part of just being the one who's doing the work and then also having a full-time job and, and, and taking any other opportunities to just speak uh, in communities. It's uh, a lot, uh, but, and if I could get my, tr my brain on track to, to, to mobilize, then I, I think it would be so easy to train like community partners to have sugar mode off to not just be something that exists uh, behind my personal computer, you know? Yes, yes. Uh, um, and and honestly, the whole the whole thing is just when I see people uh, 
it's so weird how people feed you without knowing. But when I see a person that has bought the t-shirt and then they put it on and they send me a picture in the background and I'm like, and they're like, look at it. Like I mm. can do it now. Or uh, it's just so empowering, you know, because um, it, as much as, as I've got myself together, it still takes for somebody that you didn't even think that was listening to you to show you that, hey, like this thing works and thank you. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Yep. Thank you. So, yeah. Um, yeah. But whatever business advice you have for me or if you have like, I, you know, so strategies, I'm open. I, I'm just, you know, I'm so wired into being uh, a nurse and. Uh, and then just sharing information for warning purposes for people that it's, it's kind of hard to think of like value, you know? Yes. I honestly, it's so funny, Sean, because every time I come off these calls and I jump on a quick call with Misty afterwards and we talk about how amazing the guest was and how awesome it was and all those different things, I always say like, oh, Misty, you need to talk to this person. Misty, you need to coach this person. Misty, she, she'll go to the next level of it. And like, and I just think that like what you're doing, you know, as a nurse, like you're almost putting on your entrepreneurial brain now and you need to figure out how to capture all of these things and what your next step is. And like, I love that. So I eat that stuff up and I can see this growing so quickly because you have such a powerful message and it's coming from such a place of passion. And I love the comments that are coming through with people that you've already educated and empowered. So um, oh, yeah, keep, keep it going. I love, I'm really excited to watch your journey with this. Oh, thank you, Mr. Mm. Running for Office. Yes. You're doing your thing. <laughs> yes. You know, and I think that, but that's, but that's that other level because I'm pretty sure that I can ask you this question. Like, did you ever think that you would be doing what you're doing right now? You know, if you would have stepped back like 10 years ago. Yeah, uh, actually, yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, you're one of those. <laughs> well, I'll tell you why. It's, I'll tell you why. It's because the person who's in the role has been there for 30 years. Um, and so 25 years ago, when I was working with Youth at Risk, I saw her amplifying voices and doing all these great things. I'm like, I could totally do that. I would love to do that. I would love to be a person who can empower my community in that way. But she's been in that role for so long. So as soon as she announced that she's retiring, that's when I reached out to her to mentor me. Mm. And I started to follow her around. So, so I've been grooming myself for that role over the last two years. And I just basically just found someone who just latched on to her because it, all the things that we do, the conversations we're having right now, all these things culminate in certain moments in our life. So I really feel like this is a culmination of, for me, October 24th, becoming a city council where I can do the things I'm doing on a, on a micro level, on a, on a grander scale. Yeah, that's amazing. So and then and then I'm gonna ask you like how long have you been doing Pilates too? You know, you know, yeah, or what, exactly. working on your mindset to you know because that's a that's probably key. You've probably been yeah, working I've, on yourself longer. <laughs> sure, and it's it's I'll I'll give you like a really condensed version of it. But I started in social work and in community work, and then got into you know realizing that like kids were having better conversations like over the bench press and working out than in the counseling setting. Then started my business and personal training from there. And then over the years, you know, Pilates was helping me. I used to play football and it helped me a lot. And then when I had an opportunity to learn Pilates, I recognized that there was, there's no guys teaching Pilates and there's definitely no brothers teaching Pilates other than Scoop Pilates, who's in the chat right now. Right. So, uh, so Phil Griffin also has the same story of being the one looking around and realizing I can have a corner on this Pilates market by being the only guy in the room. Um, and then that became almost like my crusade of just getting men to return to this movement methodology that was designed in part for men, right? So, um, so that was it. But then at the same time, we see how our message gets out and we start to connect with people. And, and then, you know, and the same thing you're doing with sugar is what I was doing with movement and saying that, guys, this could be a missing link for your fitness. You know, athletes, this could be something that helps you. Like, you know, pe people have like knee surgery you you don't have to go to athletic therapist all the time. You can legit do Pilates. Like my wife had her ACL, MCL, and a microfracture surgery and came to Pilates with me every single day and didn't go to physiotherapy. 
So I, I mean, yeah. you know, and I, I'm like you. I mean, I think the weird thing is just really just trying to up your game daily. You know, like how do I? And and then when you when once you do that, you're like, okay, I'm I'm ready to up somebody else's game. You know, you're almost like taking this as a as a mission impossible. You know, yeah. will this really help them if they? Yeah. So, and it, it's just weird how, like the the change when it starts with you that it it really does change everyone around you. Yeah. Everyone, or at least the circle that you want to operate in now. You know. Absolutely. <laughs> If I can say one more thing, because I think we have like a minute left here. Okay. Yeah. In the same way that sugar is so powerful when it's refined, keep refining your message. Mm, wow. Keep keep refining your message because the more you refine it, the more addictive your message is going to be. Wow. <laughs> I love it. And I, love I think it. that this will go very, very far because it's such a powerful message. So keep refining it, keep making it stronger and, and watch how far you go with it. Wow. Thank you. I'm grateful. Thank you. All right. My <laughs> pleasure. Um, we might get cut off any second. So let me just say my goodbyes for now. Um, love to have you back again when Misty's in her studio and in her beautiful garden. And uh, let's continue the conversation because you're doing great work. Thank you. And I appreciate it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Thank you. And thank you to everybody who joined us today. Yay. Thank you, everybody. All right. Take care. Thanks so much, Sean. Okay. So okay. okay. You too. Bye. Bye.